Martha Nkwanzi Katanga and Patricia Kakwanza, daughters to the deceased Henry Katanga, Otai Charis, a medical practitioner from Bogolobi Medical Hospital, and Yamanile George Shamba Boy are facing charges of destroying and removing vulnerable evidence that would have been used in court in the murder case of businessman Henry Katanga. The father appeared in court before Judge Isaac Mwata for mention of the bail application and the date when court will deliver a ruling on their bail application. In opposition, we also filed written submissions on the 5th of February this year. My Lord, the respondents filed an affidavit in rejoinder. The applicants, I beg your pardon. And their submissions in rejoinder on the 7th of February. My Lord, as court may observe, On the day the sureties were introduced to court, we reserved our right to interview or, or seek clarifications from the sureties pending service and verification. Service. service of their proper particulars and verification thereof. My Lord, we confirm that our land colleagues eventually served us with clear copies. So, my Lord, we have three prayers to make on this, uh, on this day. The first is to seek for your indulgence for us to interview or seek clarification from all the three sureties of applicant number four, from all the three sureties of applicant number four. Amanire George, as well as clarification from the fourth surety for applicant number three. My Lord, that will not take more than four minutes, if court is pleased. That's, that, the second one is to further seek for your indulgence to allow us highlight our written submissions and in our estimation that should not take us more than 10 minutes. My Lord, the third prayer and third and final prayer which should actually come first is to seek for your indulgence to allow us raise a point of law in respect of the affidavit in rejoinder as deponed by Mr. Bruce Musinguzi because we are of the considered opinion that the said affidavit offends 
the rules applicable to admission of affidavit evidence and it should not be relied on by court. So in that preliminary point of law, my Lord, we will be seeking to persuade you to strike off the said affidavit even before we do the oral highlights. <coughs> my Lord, I seek for your indulgence in those three matters. Most of that. Argument that my land friends reserved any right to interview any person. Moreover, my Lord, the DPP has filed a substantive affidavit with Tayse David and Anna Kiza challenging the very sureties they now seek to interview. Affidavits. Two affidavits. They have also, in their submissions, at page four of their submissions, gone on length to attack those sureties. My Lord, this court gave them an opportunity to either speak right. in opposition or to file in writing. They had to choose, my Lord, between having their cake or eating it. Today's prayer is a prayer for him to have his cake and eat it too. So we oppose that first ground. It is all the material for the court to make a decision has been put on file by all the parties. My Lord, if you look at... Uh, the affidavit of Betese, paragraph 8 of his affidavit, he's very clear on the sureties that they now wish to respond to. My Lord, this is important to note that this bail application was filed in this court on the 10th of January, 2024. Under Regulation 8 of the Bail Guidelines. This court has 30 days from receipt of the application to render a decision. Since that time until now, this court has bent over backwards to allow the state to participate in these proceedings to the maximum level possible. But my Lord, the time reaches when the accused people's rights also need to be taken into account. They had 30 days for this application to be disposed of. And 32 days later, the DPP is asking to interview sureties, who he didn't even give notice that he would require on the day of a mention. Some of whom may not even be in court because today was a mention date. So my Lord, it's rule eight, which says the court shall consider and dispose of, of the bail guidelines which is the Constitution Bail Guidelines for Courts of Judicature Practice Direction. It is Regulation 8. My Lord, no one can blame the court for overshooting the time. The reason why the time has been overshot is because of the patience the court has had with the parties. So, my Lord, we cannot now say that on top of challenging... In the, in the submission and in two affidavits in reply. Yeah, yeah. Then, my Lord, the issue of highlighting. My Lord, again, this court was clear. We, on the, on the last time we appeared, actually asked for an opportunity to make a highlight, and the court was clear. It asked all parties to file written submissions. My Lord, it is time for counsel and the bar to trust the bench's ability to understand what we have written. Unless they want to raise a new point, there is no magic to highlight in the written word and the spoken word. The court gave us a day to make oral arguments. No, the court gave us a day. 
for this bail application to be argued orally. Okay. The parties came here and were not ready. The court then requested for written arguments and for timeline. I think asking us to highlight them for 10 minutes, surely whatever my learned friend was not clear about in writing, he shall not be clear about orally. Then, my Lord, again, they have had opportunity to have written submissions in. Any further preliminary points they wish to raise, they should have raised them with written points. And even by notice. I mean, it is the height of discourtesy to turn up at the bar with an ambush on the day of a mention. So supposing the court had come with its ruling, or maybe it has. Then, so, so my Lord, our prayer is that we be, as this court, gave, this court already made decisions on these points by giving us timelines and told us we shall come for a mention and the court was clear on that mention date we shall get a ruling date. Sure. My Lord, there is no reason for us to have a continuous back and forth. We pray for the ruling date, my Lord. Pray for the afternoon. So that all pending matters are ironed out since on a mention day is strictly restricted to giving a ruling date. Secondly, my Lord, preliminary points of law can be raised at any time during proceedings with or without notice. My Lord, in this case, the point of law is in respect of the admissibility of the affidavit in a rejoinder. My Lord, this affidavit was filed, our submissions, and so we wouldn't even have pleaded it. Uh, my Lord, to the extent that the PO is restricted to issues of law regarding admissibility of the evidence contained in the affidavit, it is only fair and proper that court entertains it because my Lord denying it would be to say we leave this court to follow evidence that is inadmissible and we are officers of court. The burden lies on either of us to ensure that court only considers what is legally admissible. It should also be noted, my Lord, that when the sureties were examined, we respectfully reserved our right and my Lord, we went on record and asked whether the sureties would be recalled. But in this case, my Lord, we are not even calling for all sureties. We, are, we have been careful to only point, point out three sureties for applicant number four and only one for applicant. We cannot submit on the suitability of sureties except, my Lord, through this interview. And finally, my Lord, we, this process can be expeditiously done. The interview will take not more than four minutes. My Lord, they ought to be here. Actually, we would be surprised if they are not here. If they are not here, the burden is on the applicants. Otherwise, why would, how would they apply for, for bail in absentia of their surety? Senior State Attorney Jonathan Mwaganya asked court to deny the accused bail, raising objections, basing on the substantiality of Amanide George's sureties, alleging that they have failed to present to court their places overboard. My Lord, uh, with your indulgence, let me begin with the sureties. To Shave, Atwijuse and Murun. Then, the, then when we finish this, we call there. To Shave, Joab, who is to Shave? My Lord, may I request you get a microphone to just repeat court you, his relationship with the applicant. Just his relationship. How Shabe. is he related? This is the first surety to Shabe Joab. Please get a microphone. May, may I request the clerk to be of help here? You may re you remove your mask unless you are sure you will be audible. 
What's your relationship with the applicant? Sorry? Your friend. Pass over the microphone to Mr. Atwijuche, Anthony. Relationship with the applicant? It's my cousin. Uh, what do you mean by that? Atwijuche, Anthony. Eh? Sorry? Atwiju, yes, sorry. Atwiju, Atwiju Kire, Anthony. Uh, please, uh, what do you mean by is your cousin brother? If you can break it down for court. How does he become your cousin brother? Is a son or, or who? Like I can say my cousin brother is a son of my father's brother. How is he? How does he become your cousin brother? Uh, you repeat that. Pass over the microphone to the third surety. The name is Sharon Murunji. How, is, how are you related to the applicant? What do you mean? Wife to his brother. By, by brother you mean biological brother. Okay, you can now separate. Now, in the interest of time, we are just going to do this. Eh? I repeat. The first was the name of the applicant, as is known to the surety. I don't know his father's name. Then the name, now you finish that, the name of Amanira's You can take your leave, please. In rejoinder, cannot be relied on for being argumentative, prolix, and in none prolix and in none compliance with Order 19 of the Civil Procedure Rules. My Lord, the Civil Procedure Rules apply even to criminal pro uh, proceedings with necessary modification. And when it comes to admission of affidavit evidence, it is the law. My Lord, under Order 19, Rule 1, an affidavit shall be confined to such facts as the deponent is able on his own to prove except in interlocutory applications on which statements of his belief may be admitted, provided that the grounds thereof 
as stated. My Lord, in the case of Nambi Holdings, Uganda Limited, versus it's a miscellaneous application number two, uh, number 622, 622 of 2019, your land brother, Justice Boniface Wamala, made reference to the hope, adopted the definition in Black Law Dictionary, the ninth edition, at page 1331, 331, the, un the unnecessary and plus stating of facts, the unnecessary and superfluous stating of facts and legal arguments, their lordships also added, and I quote, to add to the application. An affidavit should contain facts and not arguments or matters of. No, my. So he's not going to finish his presentation now. He already is out of time. Moreover, is talking about highlighting arguments which the court can read and understand. If he's not going to make his arguments, which we respond to now, let's respond to what he has raised and we close. No, actually, my my good brother. They should be clear that they are not interested no, in no. all highlights, so that. My Lord, that's what I'm, I'm requesting. So that we proceed within the recommended... Uh, my, my Lord, I, I want to be... Yes, yes, that's true. But my Lord, these are three distinct things. I beg that court understands us, my Lord. And we, are, we respond and they rejoin. In this case, they are telling me to begin which offends the process, the procedure. I can only begin... It's okay, my lord. I will proceed to point of law therein and the substantive replies. My lord, on the point of possession of a fixed place of abode for the applicants and the sureties, the fourth applicant has no fixed place of abode of his home. My lord, the LOC introduction letter for the fourth applicant introduced him to this court as a surety. My lord, we highlight that. And my lord, you will find it as an extra U2 of the fourth applicant's affidavit. He didn't provide even the full particulars of his national ID. My lord, even after we prayed that these particulars be provided. So when it comes to his sureties, my Lord, and I pray for the, yeah, for the three sheets. My Lord, our contention is that these sureties are professional sureties. Who told you that I'm restricted in oral highlights? Uh, anyway, my Lord, I am not restricted in oral highlights. Oral highlights mean expounding, explaining. And we already said on, on, on page four yes. that these sureties are not connected to him and they are not competent. Why is my colleague worried about issues of fact? If, if he is here as an office of court and to do justice, I pray for leverage to make my submissions. He has his time. To respond, most obliged. My Lord, their professional sureties are not connected to the fourth applicant in any way. They filed LOC recommendation letters in their band of annexures, my Lord, annexure V2, v, uh, uh, V2, W1, and X2. My Lord, on verification, and as contained in the, in the affidavit of number 30844, Detective Sergeant Veteise David. My Lord, uh, specifically paragraph 8, the same LOC. Chairman, 
confirmed that all the three sureties are not residents of his village, kindly make reference to annexure B, C, and D of the Itese's evidence. B, C, and D. Avidavit. My Lord, those are next years contain a, uh, clarifications from the area LOC. And he categorically states that these three sureties live in different villages unknown to him. Unknown because he does not even mention which villages. In fact, my Lord, none of these sureties that you saw here is known to the LOC one, and that Jonan, my lord, was not produced. Said he did not know his father's name, he didn't, that his mother is Ada, that he lives in Migongwe village, in Migongwe sub county. State also objected to all Tai Charis's sureties, alleging that they are not connected to the applicant, and that some of them have failed to present their IDs to court. My lord, regarding this lady, Sharon Murunji, who we actually believe has submitted before, is totally disconnected with the applicant. She claims to be a sister in law, a wife to a biological brother of the fourth applicant. But here, on her sheet, she does not know the applicant's father's name, she does not know where the applicant comes from. My Lord, that cannot be, that cannot be a relative. A person married in the family of the applicant. My Lord, even with all the time that even the most naive professional surety would try to find out those facts just for the sake of appearing competent. The same applies to, to Shave. Moab doesn't know where the, the gentleman comes from. Joab. My Lord, I pray that court considers the answers provided by these so-called relatives to find that they are totally disconnected. My Lord, we want to emphasize, even in a joint bail application, like this one. The merits of each applicant's application has to be assessed separately. The merits of each applicant has to be assessed separately. So for example, yeah, most, most, yes, most of black. So it, it cannot be argued, yes. My Lord, it can't, for example, be argued that because we are not attacking Martha's or Patricia's sureties, and indeed we don't, that it should follow that all the other sureties are competent. Now, regarding, my lord, the, the, the final, the applicant number three, applicant number three, my lord, the first surety, Kasuja, now Kasuja Sharon, claimed to be the wife of the third applicant and as verified by the affidavit of Veites, eh, these people are tenants in a, they are tenants in a village in Chireka. My Lord, tenants are susceptible to shifting at any time but most important, my Lord, even a tenant should prove, should prove tenancy. At least by way of a tenant, a tenant's agreement so that he can easily be traced. In the meaning of section 15 of the TIA, They have, in our opinion, not established a fixed place of abode for the third applicant. 
that is Hasifab Kenya. The surety is called Kaya Hasifab Kenya. To date, she has not produced her original ID. A person without clear identification, my lord, cannot pass the test of street. Then, the third surety, Alamo Christine. My lord, we invite this court to recall and consider the demeanor of this surety. Alamo Christine. We invite this court to recall and consider the demeanor of this particular surety. A person who did not know where she worked. She didn't know her place of work. My Lord, this particular surety did not demonstrate ability, not also demonstrate ability to be a suitable witness, a suitable surety. Mwaganya asked court to put stringent bail terms, among others, depositing each 100 million as bail or bond. Is this a, so, a person who called himself a soldier? My Lord, the, Mr. Pio, Pio, Godfrey, I think. I'm not surprised that this soldier is not actually in court. My Lord, soldiers, he has arrived. <laughs> My Lord, when we wanted to examine him, he vanished. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, my Lord later found the calm first. Because... <laughs> No, I actually wanted him because exactly what I'm raising him, I can abandon it if he has it. I just wanted him to avail us his movement permit. Yes, does he have? Because I don't want it to be used against me if he has. To, I can abandon and save court's time. Do you have your, your movement permit? Okay, give us any permission, any permission authorizing you to move. My lord, the military does not work by word of mouth. And this is the substance that I want to demonstrate. He can now sit, let me make my submission. Is he here? He doesn't have. He says those things don't apply to him. He's above military procedures. <laughs> he cannot be a soldier of UPDF. Okay, my lord, the point I'm making. Yeah, my lord. Yes. My lord. For this particular surety, he did not avail any document such as his warrant card, warrant card, or movement order. My Lord, it is trait, it is a matter of judicial notice. For a soldier to cross from one district to another, the same applies to a police officer or even a prison warder must have clearance. In this case, there is no letter from his superiors permitting him to even stand surety for a suspect in a court of law. My Lord, soldiers can be deployed outside the boundaries of Uganda at any time without prior notice. My Lord, soldiers by their calling are deployable in combatant, in combat. And if this happens to him, my Lord, there is no guarantee that he will be easily accessible. And more importantly, my Lord, without clearance from his superiors to stand surety. There is no commitment and his supervisors cannot be compelled to produce him in court if the applicant absconded. Access to military barracks, barracks is restricted and not even the police my lord 
will storm a military establishment to effect an arrest without superior military clearance. We pray that you consider that the circumstances of this particular surety do not make him a suitable surety. That a person in our national disciplined army, my lord, just walks anyhow without superior clearance should be treated as extremely suspect of this surety. My lord, regarding uh, Martha and uh, the other one, Patricia, we didn't find anything worth highlighting, yes, both in respect of themselves and the, their sureties, simply adopt the sub our written submissions as are. So in final prayers, my lord, we oppose the application in totality. We invite court to consider the fact that this matter was already committed and uh, ready for trial. We invite court to exercise its discretion to deny the application and instead have the matter fixed for hearing so that the ends of justice can be met at the earliest. But, my Lord, should this court be inclined to grant, be inclined to grant bail to any of the applicants, then we pray for stringent terms. We want to propose a deposit of land titles but Edison, you want me to say you are new to these things. You can't add you and conclude a bail without this. I don't have to. I don't have to. Deposit of their national passports. My Lord, a, a, a punitive bond commitment. Bond commitment for the sureties that will be so compelling for their performance of the bail. And we propose, if, if it pleases you, a bond of not less than 100 millions for each of the sureties should this court choose to grant. My Lord, we finally propose two things. One, Weekly, a weekly reporting to the, to the registrar until the trial date, if this court is pleased to grant the prayer for fixing of trial. And finally, a specific order for non-interference. All persons that recorded policy statements as witnesses are potential witnesses. Now I'm pleased, my Lord, to give way to... One. He asked for the... Defense, however, objected to the prosecution's prayers alleging failure to cite any law in support of his oral submissions and prayers. Mr. Muwaganya very skillfully presented three people here and he has made arguments about them that I wish to respond to. First of all, he has said that none of them was known to their LC. He has even insulted them by calling them professional sureties. Uh, for the evidence 
that none of them was known by the LC. He, he, he cited the affidavit of Detective Sergeant Betese David and asked my Lord to look at an extra B, C, and D. B, C, and D. Okay. Yes. So my Lord, if we go to an extra B, it deals with to shove it Joab. B. Paragraph two. Joab. Joab. J O A B. Paragraph two. He operates a border border within our village, Gaviro Stage, Bugolobi. He resides in a different village. I have known him for over 10 years. The LC knows the man for over 10 years. Paragraph C. At I mean an extra C. At Wijuchire, Anthony. The LC says, I have known him for over five years. And an extra D, Murunji Shalom. The LC says, I have known her for over 10 years. That is 10 years for Shalon, 5 years for Anthony, and 10 years for Joab. Yes. The last one is 10, 5, yes. Um, he also says who introduced them to him. And my land friend seems to have thought that that introduction was being introduced now. But the LC is clear. He has known them for a very long time. My land friend then asked them to write answers to questions. My Lord. He asked all of them, where Amanire lives. And all of them, you will see from the answers, responded, Mbuya. He asked all of them what his name was, and of course that was obvious. Uh, they reside in Mbuya. He then asked all of them, what is Amanire's mother's name? All of them, all of them, at Ujuchere, Anthony said the mother's name is Ada. A-D-A. -A. That Amanire, and then uh, Shalom said the mother's name is Ada. A-D-A. A, D, A. In short, it's the same answer. Okay. Uh, they all know the mother is called Ada. The, the one who didn't know the parents' names is the friend. He asked them, where does Amanire reside? And he said to the friend, surely, if you're a friend, you must know where he lives. And indeed, all of them answer Mbuya, with one of them giving, an, on top of Mbuya, giving details of also a village. My Lord, those are not professional sureties. To call them professional sureties who do not know Amanire or strangers to their village is incorrect. In fact, those are substantial sureties. My learned friend then 
without citing any law called the brother of Mr. Otai, Mr. Opio, the surety, the fourth surety, Opio, and said that as a UPDF officer, he cannot move from Jinja to Kampala without what he called a warrant card or what he called a movement order and asked court to take judicial notice. He asked court to take judicial notice, move freely and cannot stand surety without a letter. My Lord, what the court can take judicial notice of is that even in the military, they have a court system where the accusers are the commanding officers. So do they provide permission for surety? But the point, my Lord, is twofold. One, there is no law cited belonging to the Uganda People's Defense Forces is not equivalent to a suspension of your rights within the Constitution. The bail guidelines, guideline number 15, there is no law that says belonging to UPDF suspends civil liberties or family relations. Officers are citizens of Uganda and the constitution provides them the liberties that it provides civilians as well. And any restrictions on their liberties are set out in the UPDF Act. And standing surety is not one such exception. My Lord, as set out in the UPDF Act, and standing surety is not one such. Yes. They are not arbitrary. Act. And standing surety is not one of the restrictions set out in the Act. My Lord, the bail guidelines also provide no exception, no exception for UPDF officers. And there is no rule in the bail guidelines prohibiting them. I want to cite my Lord Regulation 15, Sub Rule 2. Heading of the bail guidelines. Heading determining suitability of a surety. Regulation 2. The surety shall provide documentary evidence of the following. A copy of his ID, passport or alien's identification card, an introduction letter from his OC1 chairperson. He has provided the things that the law requires him to provide. That appeal. My land friend also highlighted the lack of a, of a what he called a national ID for Kaya Haspa. My Lord Kaya Haspa has supplied um, Kaya Hasifa. Because Kaya Hasifa of Kenya. It was also a surety for Defense also prayed to court for mandatory bail for one of the accused, Trisha Kakwanza, who is a three-month breastfeeding mother. So she has provided everything she needs to provide, but my land friend didn't like the way she, she answered. My lord, she's, uh, we, we invite court really to ignore the prejudices of my learned friend. Now, my learned friend then also said that failure to supply tenancy agreements is not proof of a tenancy, if I understood him correctly. My Lord, we, ha we responded to that in our submissions, page 8, on place of abode, and we highlighted the authority of Luswabi Habat 
versus Uganda, where the court held, this court held, Herbert versus Uganda, uh, criminal case number 0029 of 2021, 0029 of 2021, and my Lord, we had supplied the authority in our submissions, where this court held that we do not agree with the state attorney on this submission. The applicant attached an LC letter which clearly describes his place of residence to be Butabika, Bukirwa village in Kawempe. It does not matter whether they are tenants own homes. What is necessary is to describe one's residence which has been done in this application. The courts have now moved away from the idea that a surety must provide, as long as he provides a letter from his LC. Which brings me to the point he made about Mr. Amanire, saying that he was, he was being introduced in the letter as someone to stand surety. My Lord, substance over form. The substance of the letter had his place of abode. My Lord, on the issue of highlights, I think our submissions are fairly elaborate. Yes. The only point I would wish to highlight is in Article 23.6b. My Lord, under Article 23.6b, it says that for an offense which is triable by the High Court as well as a subordinate court, the person shall be released on bail on such conditions as the court considers reasonable if that person has been remanded in custody in respect of the offense before trial for 60 days. The rule of mandatory bail. My Lord, the three accused persons in the dock, there are four, but these three have been in detention for over 60 days. And the offense with which they are charged is also triable by the High Court. Maybe not and the majesty, maybe not the charge sheet, but the offense. My Lord, this provision was reviewed in the case which I was for supplied of Foundation for Human Rights Initiative versus the Attorney General, Constitutional Petition number 20 of 2006. It is Constitutional Petition number 20 of 2006. Foundation for Human Rights Initiative versus the Attorney General. And my Lord, I want to just read, if, with your permission, just the, under Article 23.6b, where the accused has been in custody for 60 days before trial for an offense triable by the High Court as well as the subordinate court, that person shall be released on bail on such conditions as the court considers reasonable. Here, the court has no discretion. It has to grant bail because of the use of the phrase shall be released on bail. That is what the case is saying, the Constitutional Court. And this was upheld by the Supreme Court the in the same case of Foundation for Human Rights Initiative. And, and then they said the opposite of the phrase may be released on bail is in 23.6a. My Lord, the point we want to highlight is simple. Yes, so what they are saying is in 23.6a, they says any person has a right to apply for bail and the court may release that person on bail. The court, the court concludes by saying the word shall is imperative and mandatory. It denotes obligation. The, to, to wind up that point, and that authority is worth reading in full, <coughs> because even issues of committal arose. Yes, that. Oh. Yes, yes, my, my lord. Even in that issue, even issues of committal arose. What happens after they have been committed, and the court actually? Yes, the, the court was very clear in that authority. It actually. It actually annulled the provision with respect to committal for offenses triable by a magistrate in the TID. Yeah, if you look at section 17. 
But my lord, the, the, the former section 17 of the TID was, was, was annulled by the, in that case. Foundation for Human Rights Initiative, which has been supplied. Yeah, my, my lord, maybe. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, my lord, the, the offenses which the applicants are tried are tribal by the high court and the subordinate courts. And they have been on remand since the 21st of November, 2023. They have been on remand since the 21st of November, 2023. 2023. The days were concluded on the 22nd of January, 2024. On the 21st of January, 2024. By then, they had not even been committed to the High Court. My Lord, the other point we want to highlight is in respect of applicant number two. My Lord, an applicant who can't even stand in court. An applicant who is a suckling, breastfeeding, yes, a lactating mother. My Lord, if there's anything the court can take judicial notice of, is even of the health danger of a lactating mother's inability, the lactating mother's inability to breastfeed her child. Where is the child? She has been separated from her child. My Lord, the child isn't, hasn't been charged. So the child is at home with her relatives. The, the issue is on the health of the mother. No. The issue is on the health of the mother. Just lactating alone. I think the court can take judicial notice. The child is not in prison, my lord. No, my this lord. One this one stayed with the father. But he lacked some of his abilities. Okay. Um, my lord, for that, for that one, we just wanted to highlight the case of Kajenda and others versus Uganda. Yes. K A G Y E N D A. G. G for God. And others versus Uganda. My Lord, this is this, this court, this this very court. My Lord, um, yes, in this court. By you, my Lord. Where, my Lord, you held that the applicant had given birth, and the court takes judicial notice that newly born children require constant attention and care, which cannot easily be provided by prison authorities. Um, my lord, my learned friend then, in summary, dealt at length with um, with uh, my learned friend then made proposals which I want to maybe summarize on, but only saying one thing about them. I don't want to address his proposals. It's, yeah, yeah. It is entitlement. Yes. I just want to say that the use of the term punitive reflects the attitude of the state tone of innocence. Attitude of the state towards the presumption of innocence of the accused person. Bail and standing surety are not punishments. I've only said that. And then the last point, my Lord, which I wish to raise, is Regulation 8 of the Bail Guidelines. My Lord, this is the regulation which provides that an application for bail shall be disposed of within 30 days from the receipt of... The application was filed on the 10th of January within 30 days. My Lord, the 30 days lapsed on the... They, last, they lapsed on the 9th of February, last week. We are now on the 12th, my Lord. Our prayer is that we be given an expeditious decision. And my Lord, we also apologize that the delays have really been occasioned from the bar. And we pray, Lord, that, this, that your, your Lord should be pleased.
to render your decision. Judge Isaac Mwata said 21st February 2024 to deliver a ruling on their bail application. The FACUS persons have been further remanded. Nkwanza and Kakwanza Patricia were arrested alongside their mother Mole Katanga, who is jailed in Luzula prison on charges of murdering her husband Henry Katanga.